feeling cursed, charmed, uh, attached to negative energy patterns, addicted to toxic ways of being. Well, today's class is just for you. We are going to be getting into circumambulation magic. If you've never heard of this before, you're not alone. This is a very deep form of magical ritual that is incredibly simple. You are totally capable of doing it. And in this class, I'm going to show you how. So what is circumambulation? Essentially, it is walking in circles around someone or something. In a lot of traditions, uh, the one that comes to mind the loudest for me is Hinduism, uh, circumambulating a person or an icon or a temple is a sign of deep respect. It's a way of offering energetic devotion. It's a, a form of worship, uh, but we see it in lots of other traditions as well. Lots of ideas of pilgrimage um, involve circumambulation either sort of directly or indirectly. It generates energy as we see in traditional forms of witchcraft, dancing the mill, pacing the circle or pacing the compass, uh, moving around and around and around, builds up energy towards a magical goal. It pulls our focus into the moment. It really is something intentional. It's a, a moving meditation, if you will, that draws our focus in while at the same time breaking binds that may attach us to situations or things, people, places, whatever, uh, that we don't want to be attached to. Therein lies the focus of our class today, circumambulation as a powerful ritual of breaking and severing connections that are not in service of our highest good. So a few examples of these connections, because it goes much deeper than just cutting cords, right? We hear a lot about, oh, cut the cord, break the tie. And this is absolutely effective for that, but we're going to go a lot deeper. So you might want to take a few notes. So first, charms and spells. Uh, if someone is, in fact, uh, the victim uh, or the recipient of a charm or spell being put on them against their will with negative connotations, this ritual in many cases can be totally power powerful enough to break that. Uh, to remove somebody. Usually when people feel like they've been cursed, they haven't. Uh, but having a ritual in place is still important because if you feel, if you're symptomatic, we still want to treat the symptom. This is good herbalism. We want to treat what we see. And even if what we see is fear-based, that's totally okay. It deserves ritual. It deserves being acknowledged. Uh, there are certainly cases too where we catch something unintentional based on somebody's envy, their jealousy, their malice, hatred, whatever, uh, can influence us when we are in moments of weakness, just like uh, the common cold can influence us when we are at a, in a moment of immune weakness, right? So another situation where we totally deserve to have a ritual in place to protect and purify ourselves. So charms and spells, all kinds of toxic patterns. You see yourself doing the same thing over and over again and it's not working. It's taking you into the same toxic place. This is a very powerful ritual. Uh, wasteful use of energy. If you find yourself being scattered and, and giving too much away and, and putting your energy in places where it's not needed, uh, the circumambulation ritual can bring you back in, can kind of get you back into center. Um, it is sometimes just nice to have a little clean and clear, you know, to just hit the reset button. Sometimes we go through something, um, an accident, an illness, a breakup, a positive transformation. There's, those can be just as stressful sometimes. And to have a ritual to turn to with the support of our plant allies that helps us just kind of wipe the slate clean, kind of get back to center in body and mind and spirit, all that uh, I think is incredibly therapeutic. You find yourself doing this once a day, uh, go for it, right? No, no harm or foul there. And finally, this is a really beautiful pre-ritual, you know, something to do before a larger ritual or working or journey working or whatever, again, to just kind of clear your mind, clear your energy field, you know, break any of the ties that bind that are not going to serve where you're trying to do, where you're trying to go. 
Uh, so just a few, I'm sure you will probably think of other applications for this ritual once you learn it. Um, so at that, what happens when we do circumambulation, when we walk around someone or something? Um, it, the first is our intention paves the way for this ritual. So what we come into the circle with an intent of is what happens. This is very important. Intention is a power that parts the hedge, that connects the worlds, that calls our allies and invokes uh, the spirits that we work with. So what is your intention? That's pretty much what you're going to get out of circumambulation work. If your intention is to break a tie to a specific person, a specific event, to remove a specific energy or toxicity from your life, uh, to change something, to ground and center, it doesn't matter. Whatever your intention is, that's what you need to hold and that's what you need to bring into this practice because that is where everything will go. Um, we will be working with tree spirits in this practice. Circumambulation as I practice it and as I teach it is very much a work of what is done with the great tree spirits. So um, the tree spirit themselves will empower your work. They will bring their own magic, their own medicine to what is being done. So now you have your intention and you have the power of the tree put together. You see where we're going with this. Uh, creative visualization is a huge part of this for me as well. I like to experience what is happening. Now, some folks are not super visual. Uh, other people are more just feeling. Um, whatever your thing is, I use creative visualization as a blanket term, right? Try not to just robot your way around, but instead see, imagine, pretend, visualize, make believe uh, whatever you want to happen, happening. So if you're trying to cut cords with somebody, imagine that cord, you know, connected to your chest or some part of your body reaching out uh, in the direction of that person or that situation, or imagine that, that pattern within yourself, see it, or try to feel or experience it so that you're bringing that much more energy into the working. Uh, what happens is that as we walk, we pace the tree, we're circumambulating the tree around and around and around, these cords, ties, patterns, uh, connections, toxicities start binding up around the trunk of the tree and breaking, right? We're using the tree as a sort of fulcrum, as a point, around which we circumambulate to destroy all of these patterns. And this is why intention is very important, which we'll get into when we do the demo here in a minute, uh, because we are really petitioning the tree to act as the severing agent in the situation. We're calling on the tree's wisdom to help us cut what needs to be cut, to unwind, right? Uh, dissolve what needs to be dissolved. However you approach it, whether it's a cutting, a chopping, a dissolving, an unwinding, um, an untwisting, whatever feels right for you, take that into the ritual with you because that viscerally will work. It'll serve your purpose. Uh, so we are circumambulating trees as a means to break uh, these different ties that binds, whether they're internal, external, uh, self-imposed, imposed by others, doesn't matter. So how are we going to do this? I'm going to give you a little point by point right now, and then we're going to go out to one of my favorite trees to work with, and I'm going to show you this in practice. I'm going to let you watch me do a full ritual, okay? So first, choose a tree, right? You have to do this with a tree. Now, if you're able to go out and stand up and walk around a tree, you should have no problem finding a good tree. We'll talk about how to choose a tree in a moment. Um, if you have uh, issues with ability, you know, you're going to have to get creative. You might have to find a tree that is planted in a planter on a sidewalk so that you can wheel around it um, or take your time or have, you know, some kind of handrail. You might need to recruit a friend to take uh, if doing this pacing work is hard for you. Um, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You absolutely can. You just got to get creative, right? Um, and sometimes that getting creative is sitting with the tree and mentally doing the circumambulation. You know, um, again, anything goes here. If, it, if you can find a workaround that works for your body, that's what you gotta do. So choose the right tree. 
Choose a tree that has a nice solid trunk. I like trees that are growing upright, that are strong, that are showing that they're well rooted, that they have a lot of power, a lot of strength so that they can handle what I'm about to bring to them. I also like to choose trees who have an affinity for the kind of work I'm doing. So trees that are uh, known for carrying energies of cleansing, protecting, purifying, and healing. Now, I generally work with evergreens for this work because they really speak to me and they always show up. Where you are, uh, you might be working with trees with specific medicinal lore or medicinal applications that make sense. Maybe you have access to cacti that you could circumambulate, uh, who I think would be great allies in this work. Uh, so be mindful of the type of tree, the personality of the tree, who it is you're engaging with, what that spirit brings to the table, making uh, sure as much as possible that you're asking them to do something that's in their wheelhouse. Um, what else? So once we choose a tree, everything after this is pretty simple. Um, first, we want to connect and align to the tree. Slow down to tree speed. Spend a moment just looking at the tree, looking at their color, their texture, how they grow, how it feels to stand next to them. Experience the personhood. Experience being in the presence of person, of that tree spirit. Uh, if it's safe to do so and, and it feels permissible, you know, run your hand along the bark, touch the leaves, touch the branches. Really get all of your senses involved with the tree. This is a way of opening up rapport getting us into touch with the deeper presence, the deeper spirit of the plant. Um, just connect. Sometimes that means just sitting there and sharing breath, you know, offering your exhalation, receiving through the inhalation, offering, receiving, offering, receiving, jumping into that sacred cycle of reciprocity. From here, I like to make a small offering to the tree, a libation hoard. If you have uh, some offering mix that you like to use, some fragrant dried herbs or grains or uh, a coin, whatever, uh, make sure that it is eco-affirming, that it will cause no problems to any of the wildlife, to the tree, to the sto soil, to the uh, mycelium, nothing. Make that gift. Uh, if you don't have something physical, make an energetic offering, you know, uh, create a ball of life energy and offer that to the tree, offer a song, a poem, a prayer, whatever. Um, I like to begin with giving a gift so that I'm not asking for something first, but I'm showing my investment in the relationship. Uh, so we're connecting and aligning, we're giving a gift, and then you need to ask for what you need. This is where we're trying to recruit the tree spirit who we've now connected to, to help us in our work. If we just go straight to the circumambulation practice, we're going to see results. But if we can get the tree spirit to help us in what we're doing, the results will be uh, profound. So just don't overthink it. Just lay bare your intention. Say, hey, uh, tree, maybe you know the type of tree, white pine. Uh, I'm coming here to do this ritual to help uh, break this bind with this situation that is causing me a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry, and I want to just let it go. Uh, so I ask you to help me dissolve or cut or destroy um, this cord, which I imagine connecting to my heart and reaching out um, and just ask for what you need, right? Just say it in your own words. Again, don't, don't overthink it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Don't get in your head about it. Just lay it all bare. Like if there's anybody in this world you can be brutally honest to and just say it however it comes out with all of its imperfections, uh, it's tree people, right? Just, just spit it out. Um, it's also very cathartic to do that, to just say things and not have to get in your own way. Um, so then I like to spend just a moment visualizing, right? Get into the visual part of it, the experiential part of it, you know, see the cord, feel the pattern, uh, feel the power that needs to be unwound and dissolved, whatever. Spend a minute getting in touch with that thing that you're trying to get rid of, or you're trying to deal with, okay? And then start pacing. Now, I always pace clockwise. Um, you may want to do counterclockwise for whatever reason. The clockwise works for me. I don't think of it in terms of this, this direction generates and strengthens in this direction. I don't think that way. Um, so I just do clockwise because in so many of the Proto-Indo-European traditions, the clockwise 
direction aligns us to the natural flow of things. And even if I'm doing destructive work where I'm trying to destroy a pattern or a charm or a bind, uh, I still want to do it in harmony, right? I still want to do it with the flow. Uh, so that's why I do that. But if you want to do counterclockwise, I've experimented with it. No harm came of it. So uh, you do you. Pace, if you're able, at least nine times. And I think nine is, you know, being the number of completion uh, is really the, the goal. If you get to nine and there's more work to do, keep walking. I've had experiences where I've paced a tree probably a hundred times before I felt a release. Uh, and I just stuck to it. I dedicated, you know, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, oftentimes it's nine to 12 before I'm like, okay, there it goes. But uh, if you got older patterns, you might need lots of paces or you might need many rituals. Um, and that's okay too. So before we get to the demo, let me give you a couple ideas for add-ins because you'll see me play with some of these in my own ritual. Um, as you're pacing, and walking and visualizing all of the cords breaking or whatever, you can also do things like wiping. You'll see me do this a lot. As I'm pacing the tree, I'm wiping my energy field, okay? This ritual that I filmed for you um, is me actually just sort of cleansing and clearing in preparation for a three-day devotional ritual that I did uh, for my patron deity. So I wasn't working on anything in specific. I was kind of just trying to come back to center shake anything off that was in the way, get myself clear and clean. Um, so I'm doing a lot of this physical wiping, you know, just sort of as I'm walking, feeling where energy is moving in my body, where things feel heavy and just flicking it off, wiping it off, pushing it into the ground so it can be composted, um, all while continuing the pace. So many, many layers happening here. At one point in this ritual, uh, I pick up a stick that fell from this pine tree it was kind of inspired. I've never done this before. I picked the stick up and I'm kind of using the stick to um, hack through some of these kind of heavier feelings that I'm carrying. And then I pick up a pine cone and I'm kind of carrying that for a minute. So I'm really in the moment with it. I'm really letting the tree spirit guide me and I'm really just radically following my intuition. I'm just being with it. And that's that's where the magic happens. You lose time. You forget that the world around you exists. You're in this nice little sacred bubble. Um, as I finish up my pacing, I kind of come back and I'm like, oh yeah, I need to go stop recording. Like I totally disconnected from the idea that I was even filming, which is usually really hard for me to do. Um, so you got wiping, flicking, uh, cutting, you might add some spins, you know, if you're feeling things are really bound up, twist and twirl, you know, twirl around, really help the tree get all of that gunk off of you. You might take little breaks to get down and pat the earth to shake off some of the energy. Uh, you might make a chant or a recitation or bring a chant or recitation that you already work with in and say that as you're pacing, uh, the tree, you might bring some breath work into it. Um, Anything goes, okay, is what I'm trying to say. Like, don't um, let your head prevent you from really experiencing the fullness of what the magic can be. So, um, once that's all done, of course, say thank you to the tree, spend a minute in ground out, sit on the ground, go back to the tree and just kind of settle back in. You might be a little wound up, literally, right? So go and just sit there and breathe, settle back in, wrap up the ritual, say thank you. And then I like to follow up with some kind of blessing, something to fill the space that I've just emptied with my cleansing ritual, right? So burn some incense, drink some tea, take a take an herbal bath, uh, bathe in the sun, bathe in the moon, take some of your favorite tincture, do something that ceremonially, ritually, um, calls a different energy and then the one that you just got rid of, right? Replace it with something. Don't just leave yourself hanging. Uh, do something different. So I like that a lot. So with that being said, I'm going to take you out. This is a, an infrequented public park where I'm going to take you, but there's this pine tree at this park that I just absolutely adore. Uh, you may have seen this tree in other videos. So I'm in a relatively public space 
in this video. Uh, I did go out pretty early in the morning. There were still folks walking dogs, probably wondering uh, what kind of crisis I was going through in life. Um, but again, pretty quickly into it, that bubble went up and whether or not people continued to be aware of me, I stopped being aware of them and that's all that matters. So uh, let me take you on this ritual. When we finish that up, we'll come back and uh, wrap the class up. So there you have it, the full circumambulation magic ritual, start to finish, done my way in that particular place at that particular time. Uh, every time I've enacted this ritual, it's been a little different. Um, there have also been times when I have circumambulated a giant boulder uh, or a pond. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tree, but you will find a deep power that comes from doing it this way. So. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. Please go out and play with this. Experiment with it. See how it feels. See where it takes you. See how the trees teach you. I would love if you would share your experiences with me, uh, either here in the comments or send me a message privately. Um, for folks who are supporting my work on Patreon, thank you uh, very much. If you're interested in getting access to all of our advanced monthly classes and the courses and all that good stuff, um, come over here and see what we're up to. This is kind of where I'm sharing most of my content at this point in addition to 
all the stuff that I do here on the YouTube, uh, free community classes every Friday. So if you haven't uh, hit the subscribe button, please do that so you don't miss anything. And I will see you next time.